Tokyo Swindlers is a new Japanese crime drama series released on Netflix that serves as the on-screen adaptation of Ko Shinjo's 2019 novel Jimen Shitachi, which also serves as the name of the series in Japanese. Over its seven-episode runtime, a man named Takumi Tsujimoto works with a criminal gang headed by the notorious Harrison Yamanaka as they sell properties and lands by pretending to be the rightful owners, swindling buyers of millions of yen. It is when the team prepares to conduct their biggest heist yet of fake selling a temple and its associated compound for a whopping 10 billion yen that their undoing really begins. Tokyo Swindlers is a fun watch, mostly because of its uncommon plot and some of the layered characters, and it provides quite a thrilling experience. A spoiler warning ahead as we will be discussing essential plot points and character details from the show. So if you've seen it already, let's dive straight into the video. And while you're at it, please like the video and subscribe to our channel as it helps us a lot. Now what is the Netflix series about? Tokyo Swindlers begins in a forested land thousands of miles away from Japan, possibly somewhere in Europe or North America, as three men are seen on horseback. While one of them is basically a hunting guide, the two others are occasional hunters who are new to the area, and so they prefer the guide to lead them towards animals. One of these hunters is a stoic Japanese man named Harrison Yamanaka, who confesses that he is a criminal, a land swindler to be precise. Before he can explain more about this profession to the other hunter though, the guide is attacked by a ferocious grizzly bear, and Harrison has to shoot the animal down before it can attack them as well. The series then brings us back to an apartment in Tokyo, where Harrison recounts the incidents from his hunting trip to a younger man named Takumi Tsuchimoto. Using the story to talk about the uncertainty of life and also as proof of his own bravado, Harrison proposes that Tsujimoto join hands and work with him so that the young man can turn his life around and take revenge for the wrongdoings in his own past. Five years later, Takumi is an inseparable part of Harrison's real estate fraud group, colloquially referred to as land swindlers, who pose as the owners of property and sell them off at very high prices to wealthy buyers, mostly other real estate development companies. This particular kind of fraud became quite relevant in Japan in the post-World War II era, and while the government managed to bring it under some control, the habit researched time and time and again. When the economic boom in the 1980s and 90s increased the value of real estate in most urban parts of the country, land fraud was once again on the rise. However, personal documents also started to become digitized shortly after, curbing the possibility of faking them, and this briefly stopped the crime to an extent. When scammers were finally ready with all digital techniques of forgery, and Tokyo was selected to host the Olympics in 2020, land swindlers once again sprung back into action. Harrison Yamanaka works as the leader of his group, making investments in the various steps of the scam and also selecting the target properties. Tsujimoto is his masterful negotiator, who goes to meetings posing to be a real estate agent trying to sell the property, while a woman named Reiko recruits imposters who pose to be the real owner of the land and give their agreement to the sale. The team also includes an informant, Takeshita, and a legal advisor, Goto, who take tremendous risks to sell off properties to agencies in exchange for millions of yen. By the time the real owners object to the supposed sale and the authorities reveal that the sellers were all faking their identities, the real estate companies have lost all their money, and the group of scammers is nowhere to be found. Why does Harrison target the temple plot? The group's first exploit in Tokyo Swindlers is the sale of a 54-year-old house belonging to an elderly man named Shimazaki Kenichi, who happens to have been living at a hospice center for the past year. As Kenichi has no close family members to look after his house, Takeshita prepares a file to ensure the fake sale of the property for a hefty price. Its location being close to modern facilities like the metro and other fancy hotels and buildings obviously hikes the price of the house, and a figure of 900 million yen is set. As false information about the sale of the house is spread in the nearby area, an up-and-coming real estate company named Mike Holmes becomes interested in buying the property for residential redevelopment. The legal advisor of the group, Koto, first meets with the representatives of Mike Holmes and sets the price even higher, to 1 billion yen. A sum of 100 million yen is determined to be paid in advance to the broker, Koto, who will see through the deal between Mike Holmes and Shimazaki Kenichi. However, it is almost customary for the buyers to meet the original owners of the property in Japan, and so the representative from the housing company, Maki, wants to meet with Kenichi. 
The broker Goto and the property manager Tsujimoto, both of whom are actually faking their positions and identities, assure Maki that he will get to meet the owner of the house. But in reality, Kenichi is being treated for cancer at a hospice, and so an imposter also has to be arranged for. This is the specialty of Reiko, who looks into the profiles of various men and women bearing physical resemblance to the seller they have to impersonate and manages to find someone desperate enough to do the job in exchange for money. In this case, a man named Teiko Sasaki is chosen to be the impersonator of Kenichi for the meeting, and he avoids getting caught at the last minute when a tricky question about the locality of his house is asked. This is because of Harrison's extremely meticulous preparation for the heist, as he had given a small microphone to be attached to Sasaki's ear in case of emergency, and he now uses this device to tell the old man the correct answer. Thus, the group of land swindlers successfully adds one more victim to their list as Mike Holmes loses the entire sum of 1 billion yen after they are notified by the authorities that the sale had been conducted fraudulently. In this manner, Harrison and his group have cheated numerous businesses and individuals, like Maki himself, who have to answer to their employers about the large-scale scams. But the perpetrators are never perturbed by this devilish means of earning money, which often takes away the livelihood and sometimes the life of those who are being cheated. The leader Harrison actually quite enjoyed the criminal act, and to him, it is almost like going on recreational hunts, where the success of his actions strokes his ego and pride as well. Therefore, the man now wants to go for something bigger, which would earn them in the billions, and it is for this reason that the Kwanji Temple plot is targeted. How did Takumi Tsujimoto and the others prepare for the sale? The property that is targeted by the swindlers includes an old Buddhist temple called Kwanji, which is technically out of bounds as it is an operational temple in the city and could most likely be impossible to demolish. However, right behind the temple is a large parking lot and an unused building area, both of which are extensive enough to use for the construction of a high-rise as they measure at about 3,200 square meters. The difficulty with regards to the property is that the entire area belongs to the daughter of a temple priest, a nun by the name of Natsumi Kawai, who has no intentions to sell. Therefore, the group sets out to find more about Kawai in case any information can help their plan, and soon Tsujimoto stumbles upon such a clue. Kawai was known to be a recluse whose husband had abandoned her some two years ago, and it was believed that she never left the temple compound at all. However, Tsujimoto sees her leave the temple in a taxi one night, wearing a wig and makeup to conceal her identity. In reality, Kawai would often visit a fancy hotel where she indulged in intimate moments with hired men. She had also fallen in love with a male host named Kaide, and the woman had been actively trying to woo him into a relationship. Around this same time, the head of the real estate development division at a company named Sekiyo House, Ayogi, faces immense pressure from his superiors after a deal he was overseeing is lost. The company had plans of building a multi-purpose property on the piece of land that had been targeted, but the deal could not be completed, causing Sekiyo House some serious loss of funds. Therefore, Ayogi has to now find a new plot of land where similar large-scale construction can be done, and he approaches an old real estate informant named Hayashi about any leads. Incidentally, Hayashi knows all about Harrison's business, and he tells Ayogi about the property around the Kwanji Temple. When the division head and his team visit the property and are thrilled by its vast area, Hayashi works as the middleman between the two sides. Thus, Tsujimoto and his colleagues now have a final buyer as well, in the form of Ayogi and the Seikyo House Company. For the final meeting before the sale is officially confirmed, Ayogi naturally asks to meet the nun Kawai, and so the real owner has to be removed from the scene. Tsujimoto ensures this by convincing Kaide to take Kawai on a romantic vacation away from Tokyo, and Reiko has to herself become the impersonator when every other plan fails. However, an act of betrayal against the group now threatens the success of the plan, as the informer Takesheta turns vindictive against Harrison. Takesheta kills Kaide and threatens Kawai to return to Tokyo immediately, while he had also sent a letter to Ayogi impersonating the real Kawai, informing him that the land deal was a fake one. However, since such rumors are quite commonly raised when large properties are bought and sold, Ayogi ultimately ignores the letter after being convinced by Reiko's and Sujimoto's performances. They also manage to wind up everything before the real Kawai can reach the temple. During Tokyo Swindler's ending, Ayogi oversees the deal and naturally gains the praise of his superiors at Sekiyo House for a brief time. 
They are then informed about the illegal and false nature of the whole deal when Kawai objects to the construction work started at her property, and the truth is revealed to everyone. Ayogi is unable to deal with the situation, and as he is occupied with the crushing thoughts of him being scammed, the man carelessly walks onto the road and is killed by a speeding truck. What does Kuramuchi find out about Tsujimoto's past? While Harrison continues to be one of the central characters throughout the duration of Tokyo Swindlers, his outright evil ways are also put on full display. While police detective Shimomura investigates the land swindling cases, Harrison kidnaps the man and kills him to halt the case. Harrison also has a habit of regularly killing the impersonators involved in the cases, as he does with the old Takeo Sasaki. In fact, the leader had been planning to kill Takeshita, because of which the informer had made plans of betrayal to ensure his own safety. But Harrison had caught wind of this too, and he ultimately kills Takeshita, just like he orders the murders of Goto and Reiko at the end of Tokyo Swindlers as well. After the murder of Shimomura, his new associate Kuramochi suspected that there was something odd about her partner's death, and so she took over the investigation herself. Meeting with an old journalist contact of Shimomura, she continued to try and find out about Tsujimoto's past. In reality, Tsujimoto and his family had once been victims of land swindling as well, when his father Masami had been convinced to invest in a piece of land at a comparatively reasonable price. The broker who got him this deal, Nishitani, was actually a land swindler, and so Masami essentially gave up his entire life's earnings to a scam. The man and his family could not bear the financial loss, and he eventually lost his sanity because of it as well. On one fateful night, when Tsujimoto was away at work, Masami set their house on fire, killing his wife, daughter-in-law, and grandchild. Masami himself survived and was imprisoned for the arson, while Tsujimoto was left to deal with the loss of so many close ones all alone. At the time, young Tsujimoto used to work as a driver for sex workers, and he continued the same work after the death of his mother, wife, and child. During one such drive, he happened to meet with Harrison after the man had almost killed one of Tsujimoto's clients, and he was instantly impressed by the young man's numb and cold reactions. Harrison eventually offered Tsujimoto the position of negotiator in his land swindling group, and the latter agreed to the job too. He had been so distraught by the experiences in life that he now brought the same misery upon others that he himself had to face earlier. In an effort to understand this ironic situation better, Kuramochi traced down Nishitani at the Philippines and managed to have the man answer questions about the incident. It was in this manner that she found out a horrific truth. Nishitani had been employed by Harrison at the time when he swindled Masami, meaning that Tsujimoto was working for the same man who had destroyed his family. What happens to Tsujimoto and Harrison? Although Tsujimoto's disregard for the lives of others let him be part of the criminal group for many years, he has an ultimate change of heart when Kuramoji tells him about the real truth about his past. The man now decides to kill Harrison and then surrender to the police, confessing all his crimes, including the murder as well as the land swindling. However, this plan does not go smoothly, as Harrison had been prepared for such a situation too. When Kuramochi also arrives at the scene to help out Tsujimoto, Harrison tries to blow up the whole place. Tsujimoto bravely throws away the grenade, and the explosion leaves him and the police detective heavily injured. A week later, Tsujimoto is seen recovering at the police hospital, for he has indeed surrendered and confessed his crimes. However, Harrison manages to remain free, as he had fled the scene after Tsujimoto and Kuramochi lost consciousness from the explosion. Instead of any prison cell, where he rightfully belongs, Harrison Yamanaka is seen on a hunting expedition in a forest at the end of Tokyo Swindlers, possibly thousands of miles away from Japan once again. Thank you for watching this video and do share your thoughts about Tokyo Swindlers in the comment section below. Hit the like button and subscribe to our channel to get your weekly dose of cinema and series. See you in the next one and for the time being we're signing off. Bye!